Hello, motherfuckers. I am Auntie Jessie, and I'm here to give you your anti-scope for the week of November 27th through December 3rd. We're going to look at the astrology shit and also pull some cards and discuss the cards that we pulled last week, too. First off, Monday the 27th, which is the day that I am recording this, we have a full moon in Gemini. Gemini is a sign that's known for its communication and social skills, so this could be a great time to network and connect with others. It's also a good time to focus on learning and education, as Gemini is ruled by Mercury, which is the planet of intellect. However, with the energy of the full moon, emotions may be heightened, so it's important to stay grounded and centered during this fucking time. We also have a square between Mercury and Neptune, which can bring about confusion and difficulty in communication. Mercury represents our rational mind and communication style, while Neptune represents our intuition, our spirituality, and our imagination. The square aspect between these two planets can cause misunderstandings and misinterpretations in our conversations and written communication. It's important to be extra clear and direct in our communication during this time. So nothing really happens, by the way, until about Friday the 1st, when Mercury moves into the sign of Capricorn. When Mercury moves into Capricorn, we may feel a more practical and focused sense of achieving our goals. This is a good time to make plans and to set realistic expectations for ourselves. It's important to remember to take breaks and not push ourselves too hard, as Capricorn's influence can lead to a tendency towards overworking. This can lead to burnout and exhaustion, which will ultimately just hinder our progress towards our goals. So. It's a good time to reflect on our long-term plans and make any necessary adjustments to ensure we're on the right path. Then more mercurial action on Saturday the 2nd as Mercury is sextile to Saturn, which is likely to bring a sense of stability and practicality to our communication and our thinking processes. However, we should also be mindful of any tendency towards rigidity or inflexibility in our thinking. It's important to stay open-minded and receptive to new ideas and perspectives, even as we rely on our tried and true methods to get things done. And finally, on Sunday the 3rd, we have a Venus squaring up to Pluto situation. The celestial event is known to bring some intense energy and that may affect our relationships and our financial situations. It's important to be mindful of our actions and our decisions during this time as we may be prone to jealousy, possessiveness, and power struggles. However, if we choose to use this energy positively, then it can also lead to transformative experiences in our relationships and help us to let go of unhealthy attachments. Also, I think I forgot to mention last week that we're now in Sagittarius season, and I may be biased, but we're pretty fucking sure that this has got to be the best season of them all. Sagittarius season is a time for adventure, exploration, and learning. As the sun moves through this fiery and optimistic sign, we might feel a sense of renewed enthusiasm and a desire to try new things. Sagittarius energy is all about taking risks, embracing change, and expanding your horizons. So get ready to step out of your comfort zone and see what the world has to offer during this exciting season. So, last week we talked about acting like a grown-up. But we also talked about destroying shit so that something new could be built in its place with our reverse tower energy. We also decided to take some time to assess our approaches with authority. In power with our reversed emperor. This week we've got three new cards. So first a card for the shit that we need to leave behind. The Four of Cups. So the Four of Cups represents introspection, contemplation, and apathy. In the traditional Smith weight deck, the card depicts a person sitting cross-legged beneath a tree with three cups in front of them and a fourth being offered by a hand that is emerging from a cloud. This person seems uninterested and disconnected from all of the cups, suggesting a sense of boredom or dissatisfaction with their current situation. Or in my favorite working deck right now of this moment, the badass tarot, this bitch is four bottles deep and knocked the fuck out. She doesn't need any fucking more. So consider if we're truly happy with the path that we're on. 
Whether we're becoming complacent or stagnant in our lives or need to seek out new opportunities and experiences that can bring fulfillment and joy. You know, something's off, right? At the same time, this card also cautions against becoming too absorbed in our own thoughts and feelings and urges us to remain open to the world around us. By staying present and engaged, we can find inspiration and meaning in even the most mundane aspects of life and discover new ways to connect with others without having to get fucking drunk and make a positive impact on the world. So the archetype that we should try to keep in mind this week as we move forward is the Four of Wands reversed. The Four of Wands reversed represents instability and lack of harmony. This week we should take a step back to evaluate what is causing us stress and chaos. Four is a boundary number, like a fort or a home. So if your safety and well-being is represented in the four walls of your shelter, that shit's been dumped over and we need to handle that. This may involve setting boundaries, prioritizing self-care, or seeking support from friends and family. By embodying the energy of the Four of Wands upright, we can cultivate a sense of peace and balance in our forts which will ultimately lead to a greater success and happiness outside. Remember, it's okay to ask for help when we need it and to take time for ourselves to recharge and regroup as needed as well. What do we need to prepare for going into this next week? Queen of Wands reversed. She says, I often represent a lack of confidence and self doubt, right? Because as we go into this next week, it's important that we take some time to reflect on our self-worth and work on building up our confidence. It's easy to fall into the trap of comparing ourselves to others and feeling like we don't measure up. However, it's important to remember that we are all unique individuals with our own strengths and weaknesses. Instead of focusing on what we lack, let's shift our attention to what makes us special and capable. One way to boost our confidence is to set achievable goals for ourselves and work towards them. This could be something as simple as learning a new skill or just promising yourself that you'll go on a walk every day around the block in your neighborhood. Fuck yeah. Maybe twice a week. Okay? You'll end up with some weird lumpy scarves and, you know, you might also end up realizing that you like saying hi to all the dogs in the neighborhood and Maybe you want to just go on that walk every day. Remember, confidence is not something that comes naturally to everyone, but it is a skill that can be developed with practice. So let's take the time to nurture our own self-confidence and embrace our unique qualities and abilities. So that's what I got for you this week. You be fucking safe out there and I'll check in on you soon. If you need to check in with me, don't feel like you can't. I generally hang around Discord these days, but you can also email me or even send me a text. So don't die, okay? I love you. Oh, bye.